Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be going back to the scary place. The spooky scary place with all sorts of bad stuff on it. It's YouTube Shorts. This is the future we're looking at. The future is short form bite-sized content. Like TikTok and Instagram Reels, short form content is where the human psyche naturally wants to go. And that means tech companies are going to keep bringing you there, whether you like it or not. I found all the videos we're looking at today in basically one scroll through the shorts. It took like an hour, maybe two hours. Collectively, they have millions of likes and hundreds of millions of views. And yeah, so just keep that in mind as we watch. Just imagine 10 Super Bowl stadiums full of people watching this content and clapping like seals. Here we go, let's go. You haven't had that feeling of like, like that drug, under drug feeling, the, you, the serotonin coming through your brain, like all logic goes out the window. Have you had that where you just absolutely want this person every day, all day? The reality is love between men and women is not the same at all. You know, men, men love idealistically, women love opportunistically. I understand. Oh, hey man, why can't you answer the question? <laughs> why can't you just answer the nice lady's question? She's asking a very simple question. Have you ever been in love, guy? You ever fallen head over heels, guy? Immediately. You see the reality of the dating market. This is just the way, it's just the way the world is. Yeah, don't get mad at me. I didn't create the game. Don't hate the player, I hate the game. The dating market does not allow, it doesn't just, men and women are white. Be a normal for once. Answer the question, just answer. Instead of defaulting to your talking points man god it's the worst i understand the fact that as a man a woman loves you for what you bring to the table you know what i'm saying your money your income your income your status your confidence your ambition your cleverness there's a whole bunch of different things that women look for in a man before they can actually love and submit and want to be with him real quick love and submit being sort of synonyms there Ooh, self-report Ooh, a little weird i mean you guys you all know the fresh and fit guys by now so it's no surprise but love you know, real love, submission isn't a part of it because submission relies on a, a power imbalance, you know? And that's not love. All about love, bell hooks, go away, go check it out. But for men, it's like, you know, we, we love women for real because we don't have as many requirements of You them love women they, for real, that's what you said? Yeah, men men love women idealistically. This yeah. is why breakups hurt men way more. This is why men commit suicide way more. I, like, when a man loves a woman, he loves her far harder yeah. than, than she loves him back. Whoa, okay, hold on. Throwing a lot of just statistics and numbers out there randomly uh, sounds good, but let's take a closer look. Oh, I see, okay. He was citing this study from Pew Research. That's It's, it's the study of breakups and who hurts more from them. Clearly, by the numbers we have, it's boy, it's boys rule, girls drool, is what this graph says. I love quantifiable assertions. They're my favorite. Also, what about that statistic about men being uh, more likely to leave their partner when they get cancer? Women are six times more likely to end up separated or divorced if they are diagnosed with cancer or multiple sclerosis than if their male partners were facing the same illness, according to a US study. The study confirmed earlier research of a divorce or separation rate among cancer patients of 11.6%, similar to the general population, but found the rate jumped to 20.8% when the woman was sick versus 2.9% when when the man was ill. Hey, what the fuck is going on there? That's weird. Seems a bit opportunistic of, of these guys to sort of not stick with the person and stick it out just because their person is sick. When a man loves a woman, he loves her far harder yeah. than, than she loves him back, so to speak. This is why women overwhelmingly, uh, you know, initiate divorce and breakups, etc. And why guys have such a time, tough time getting over it because when a man loves a woman, he loves her for real. Very odd assertion that men don't also have preferences when dating and looking for people, because he lists up all these things that women supposedly want from men before they can submit and fall in love. And sure, for a lot of people, these are factors that come into play into deciding whether or not you actually wanna see someone, but dudes have them too, and that's okay, it's the point. You're supposed to be able to, you know, be okay with uh, who you're seeing and like them for various reasons. Also, grouping in uh, male suicide statistics whenever it's convenient is totally cool to do. This yeah. is why breakups hurt men way more. This is why men commit suicide way more. Male suicide is actually because they get broken up with and get sad. And that's the big, that's the main factor. There's no, there's really not a lot of other factors. Let's say your boyfriend was going to the strip club two times a week. Would you have an issue with that? Yeah, because that I feel like that's arguing unspoken rule in a relationship. You don't oh. go into the strip club. Well, you shouldn't go to bars and clubs when you're in a relationship. Is that an unspoken rule? I mean, I've, yeah, it, it is. It kind of is. You shouldn't really be like partying with your single female friends. Unspoken rules. Uh, pretty dumb. Sounds pretty dumb to me. If you are in a relationship and there's a boundary you want to set up, you speak it. You know, you just say it. Hey, this thing you do, you know, it, it kind of makes me uncomfortable. Is that, uh, what do you think about that? That's how you solve this sort of unspoken rule problem that appears to be going on here. But also the comparison between 
you know, an actual strip club and a bar, it feels like a self-report to me. The insecurity here is just that, you know, you go out with your single friends, they all say, go cheat on your boyfriend with that guy. And then you go cheat and that's how, that's how things work, which is, you know, it's weird. It's just weird. It's weird because if you're dating someone, you don't trust them enough to go outside without sucking and fucking a bunch of, <laughs> doing a bunch of crazy, wacky stuff that you're not comfortable with, then why are you, why are you dating them? You know, if you want a dog, which you can, you know, keep on a leash at home. Get a dog and do that. Partying with your single female friends, or single friends for that matter, if you're in a relationship. What is the positive well, you ROI? you guys are older. On, well, Maybe listen. that's what you think in your own dating life. Did this guy really just say ROI? Did he use that term? I mean, he looks like he would. He's got like a quote, sort of Wolf of Wall Street situation going on. These are so uncomfortable. that just everyone in the room is so... Uh, uh, on, <laughs> well, Maybe that's what Voice trembling with rage, trying to interrupt and... Ah. <laughs> We're young. That's not how it works for She's us. She's 20 and she agrees with us. Okay. She's younger than you. Okay. So then your entire argument just went down the trash. <laughs> Come on, guys. Why does this exist? Why does this have 70,000 likes? Uh, yeah, well, you, she's, uh, you're a poopy head, stinky poopy head. Which logical fallacy is that? Someone type it in the comments. I, it's been too long since I watched a debate, Lord. If you don't want to be in a relationship and you just want to party, that's fine for you if that's your choice that you want to make. Okay, wait, that last assertion there. If you don't want to be in a relationship and you want to party, that's fine. Why are those... Mutually exclusive. Why is partying and being in a relationship mutually exclusive? It hinges the ability to obtain a relationship on the necessary decision to give up partying. No more partying, you stay inside. Very weird, very insecure, uh, weird stuff. People can have preferences, but you know, at what point do those preferences restrict the ability for someone to make their own decisions and you know, live, live a life? I don't know, seems weird. So you are a virgin? Yes, I am. Okay, yeah. Prepare for some riveting journalism here. Yes, I am. Do you plan to be like forever a virgin? Until I'm married. Question is, a preferred size. For what? For being not a virgin. One to two inches. No, oh, okay. I was like, there's no way. You know what? We're going to skip this one. Uh, it's just, I can't. I can't watch it all the way. I'm not going to. I refuse to. Damn, so like you're sad. You ever think about, you want to fuck? Should we like f um, <laughs> putting the cringe on hold for a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Vance Global. If you need some help chilling out, um, this stuff right here is the stuff for you. Vance Global sells Delta 8 and THCO products that ship directly to your door. Vance sent me some products to try out and I've been really enjoying them. These Delta 8 gummies have been great for chilling out. They're vegan, organic, and all lab testing is available on the Vance Global website. These Delta 8 carts have also been great for chilling out. There's no additives or any of that crap, just straight Delta 8 and terpenes. Vance ships directly to you with discreet packaging, so no one will know just how hard you're chilling, which is, you know, it's a shame. Try Vance Global for yourself by going to the link in the description, vance-global.com, and using discount code SAMSON for 20% off your order. Great job chilling out. All right, now let's get back to the video. Here's another video from those guys. Racist girl calls him white boy part one. Let's watch. Would you date a police officer? No the pigs because the um, institution they support is inherently racist and profiles uh, black and brown Americans especially throws them into jail which is a continuation of the slave trade essentially people are working in prisons for less than minimum wage making pennies and dimes and it's unfair and that's what you contribute to if you're a cop bars ba -ba 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 bars what are we on Instagram watching vertical videos because that is so real I've heard to say. Hit on all the points there. I no notes. My question to you is I, I disagree with you on Yeah, I bet you do. What? White boy. <laughs> That's a bit racist. Oh my god, no, you're one of those. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, racist racism. Racism. That's a bit racist. The girl looking side to side, like, whoa, oh no, this is crazy. <laughs> I'm also half white, so like how can I be racist against you? You don't think you can be racist towards someone who's white? No, I don't because you've never experienced racism in history. White people haven't experienced racism. One of the experiences. What's your definition of racism? Notice how he just keeps asking questions. He's not responding to what she's saying. He's just asking and asking because he can't respond to what she's saying because she's right. I'd say basically like the persecution in any type of way that leads to the downfall of just like someone's life. Like it's always going to affect my life. I can't take off my skin color as a black woman. Like prejudices that exist against me don't exist against you, Brian. She said Brian. <laughs> He was already getting destroyed in this debate, but then she called him Brian. No offense to any Brians out there. It's just, you, you can't really win an argument if you're named Brian. 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 
Brian. And that's why you can't be racist against a white person. So I'm sorry if you feel offended, but you are white. And me calling you white boy isn't exactly it's a racist. Bit, I mean, it's a, you are addressing me by my skin color. I consider Your skin it a bit. color will never lead to the, you know, what is it, premature murder of yourself. Like, I don't know. Like I would actually point out one thing to you. Me as a white man, I'm the only male at this table here. There are more white men killed by police officers than women of any race combined. I mean, then why aren't you mad? Why don't you hate police too? Oh no! What do you even say to that? You can't. What, do you, Brian? Brian? Why would you bring up police killing white men as an argument in support of the police? Why? Why would you do that? Then why aren't you mad? Why don't you hate police too? Because I re I realize that police are a necessary function of society. Without police, it would be chaos. We need police officers. <laughs> <laughs> a necessary, a necessary function for me and all my white boys to get blasted. <laughs> if the police don't do it, somebody's gonna do it, so may as well have the police do it, because then it's legal, you know, that they'll kill the people. It's easy. Not really much to add to this other than it is very fascinating to watch someone be jarred out of their blissful experience of racelessness. Being a white person isn't actively on Brian's mind because, you know, he's he's white. It's like the default. Race isn't a factor in his life uh, because he's white. And so when that's brought up, that's... That's, that's racism. That's what racism is to him. And that's why it's very, it's just, it's silly. It's funny. If a girl's on her phone while you're hanging out with her, do this. Hey, it seems like maybe you got something going on you gotta take care of. All good, but after that, can you put your phone away so we can just hang out? After you say this, a girl is gonna respond in one of two ways. Oh, right, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'll completely put it away. Or she might do this. Are you kidding me? I'm texting my mom. It's not even that big a deal. Like, you need to relax. Oh, okay, I mean, if that's how you feel, honestly, I don't think this is gonna be a good fit, so I wish you the best. This one I don't really care about at all, except for the ending where he gets out of the driver's side door and, and leaves his car. Where are you going, man? That's your car. Did, what, why? <laughs> I mean, you come off like a woman, you look like a woman, and, and, it, and it seems natural that you're a woman. But then you get some giant former, you know, ex-con, armed robber prisoner who's like who's like deadlifting 600 pounds and he's like some goes hey dude how you doing yeah man i'll get to you next he's like it's ma'am i'm gonna beat your ass you know and he's like sitting there that's that's not a woman it's different it's, it, different. It, it, it's different and then sitting there letting a thug do that it's like no one buys it so this is a part of alex jones definition of a woman or rather uh, what a woman isn't to him giant former ex-con armed robber prisoner who can deadlift 600 pounds and is rude to a customer service worker that those are his signifiers for what a woman isn't and for what a woman is it's uh blair white or somebody who looks like blair white so what is it specifically about that list of features that makes the person he's talking about not a woman is it the ex-con thing because you know there are women ex-cons there are women who have committed armed robbery and are in prison for it is it the deadlift thing because uh cis women can deadlift over 600 pounds the it's ma'am thing is referencing a specific incident well, it was a really viral video of a trans woman being misgendered in a GameStop and then saying that it's ma'am uh you've probably seen the clip should be no surprise that alex jones is not being 100 percent truthful when he's reappropriating this real story that happened into his thing here because according to the trans woman in that story she was repeatedly misgendered not just one time on accident but like six times but i think more importantly here uh public freak out videos happen all the time it's only when trans people are in them that they are used as evidence to sort of legislate away their identities using real laws that are demonic and horrific real laws going into effect in the government that's not a woman it's different seven million views this video has great just great that's not masculine that's toxic masculinity <sighs> buzzword <laughs> the buzzwords uh what is toxic masculinity you You're should know me. that you should know that. i'm at yes i'm asking you <laughs> oh god these are they're so uncomfortable like i'm really so i'm sorry to subject you to these i, I don't want to cut them up too much because it's just, just like let the clip run these are the ones that everyone's on here watching millions of views but man if you can't feel that discomfort in the room there is that kind of perception where i guess men can't like are yes they could be the provider in the family but they also can't show emotion or stuff like that i feel like or they just get so mad or like their emotions are so high where they end up showing it in anger i feel like that happens a lot and i've seen that firsthand okay what 
this one's tough because uh, he, he asked for a definition. And unfortunately, no matter what the definition this score gives, uh, it, there's no winning here because you get a Russell Westbrook what what gif afterwards, even though she identifies two pretty prominent elements of what we would call toxic masculinity, which is inability to express emotion and as a consequence, uh, outbursts of anger and violence. Pretty sounds good to me, but in that room, there's just, there's no winning, you know? And in this comment section, there's no winning either. She couldn't rub two brain cells together if she rented them. You can tell that she was proud of herself for remembering the phrase toxic masculinity. Just hearing her speak would turn off any man. Nothing about her is wife material. Just a bunch of dudes getting in a room and absolutely fapping about the idea of a woman being a stupid idiot. Keep in mind, the podcaster's rebuttal to what she was saying was a video of Russell Westbrook saying what? He says what? And that was his sort of counter argument critique of her definition of toxic masculinity. Very high level thinking from the men in the room. Thank you. This guy has been sending me goodnight queen every single night since May. Anything a guy does for you, he's doing for other girls. And thank you to this man for proving me right. Look at this, look at this. Started in May, started in May. So I have bad news for you ladies. The account that's sending you goodnight messages is not a real account. In early May, I built an Instagram bot that would send these messages to a group of popular creators to measure the impact of artificially boosting their egos. I used AI to create an uncomfortable sexual harassment bot to see if the girls would like it. <laughs> My plan was to start in May and send good night to single large popular creators and then stop the messaging around December 23rd, which is right in the midst of the holiday season and the most loneliest time for a single person. And I was gonna demonstrate how much random people have influence over a popular creator whose entire self-worth is based upon the validation and appraisal of others. Obviously telling someone good night is not in and of itself sexual harassment, but doing it every night uh, with no response, you're kind of like you're doing stock activities which is often sometimes followed with uh with you know photos you don't want more detailed messages you don't want not great stuff if i don't get a good night queen it like hurts my feelings and i love this and my hypothesis was correct these women said they missed the good night messages they were attached to it Follow for more big brain social hacks. I love the scientific method. It starts off sounding like, oh, maybe it's an experiment about social media and how it affects users of it and creators. But then, you know, it's just women. Women is the people he was DMing and women's egos was the variable in question. Super weird, man. Super weird thing to do. And very weird that I got a million likes, 1 million likes. Deeply depraved behavior. Is cheating morally correct? Yes. What's really fun about this is I don't even have to watch the end to the end of it because uh, jail. He's in jail. He's in prison. Beautiful. We love it. We love it so much. Why would a man who's earning two hundred thousand dollars plus? I don't have to watch this guy's either because he's dead. <laughs> okay, I, we'll watch it. We'll watch it. We'll end it on this one. Here we go. Why would a man who's earning two hundred thousand dollars plus, who can have any woman, want you? I would be coming in with also my own six-figure salary. Don't and give a shit about your money. We don't care about your money or your careers. Let me tell you, ladies, why this doesn't matter. Because we don't have access to it anyway and you ain't gonna be spending it on us. So your money Why didn't- Why would you say that? This is kind of like one of the earlier videos we looked at where preferences for male dating are the strictly defined things. And it's impossible for a man to be interested in dating someone that earns around what he earns. And you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't buy it. Doesn't make a lot of sense. It does to Kevin. And for Kevin, you know, he probably made that or more and he wasn't into having a woman that was making that much but you know that doesn't mean everybody is who in general funds the relationship i would say men in general right fund. what's the most you've ever spent on your man that's not a birthday christmas or anniversary type you just on a tuesday i spent a to me bag that i bought for and it was like about six hundred dollars six hundred dollars that ain't shit. i spent mm -hmm. six hundred dollars at dinner so I'm sorry, your six figure job and everything else don't mean shit to us. So I forgot to add commentary to the end of this clip here, but I mean, you get the gist. It's just a weird guy flexing, uh, being insecure, flexing on some random lady that he makes a bunch of money. And that's very, okay, you get it very weird. All of these videos have the same thing in common, which is that they are just a new form of very old patriarchal ideas. Women want to do something, uh, they shouldn't because I don't want them to. Women want to make money and have financial autonomy, they shouldn't do that because that's not what men want because we are all the same and you should 
just follow suit for that reason. Women who have preferences for dating are opportunistic, but women who are independent and make a life for their own are cold-hearted, cat-loving uh, bitches. So it's a weird, it's a weird thing. It's a weird place to be. Not a great place. I don't like it. I would like to get out and you guys can come with me because the video's over now. So thank you for watching. Sorry. Thanks again to Vance Global for sponsoring the video and I'll see ya. Bye-bye.